and who knows what the hell else. But uh, as it sits, you already know what it is. I'm your host, Jay Wolfpack Performance, home of the F1 Minute, hottest live show that includes you in content creation. And let's just get to this shit. Let's just get to it. Carlos is going to be out of Ferrari. Now, before we get started on that, Mr. Super Chat this past weekend uh, during the race where my stint was shortly short. Mary Beanie, hey, Jay, that was a short and sweet good luck to Ethan. Let's have a good, clean race. And go, my Ferrari buddy, Bestie. Hope you had a good B-Day yesterday. Uh, so, yes, big shout-out to Sylvia Wick, her birthday. Also, Galactus, big shout-out, her happy birthday to you as well, my bro. And uh, congratulations, Racer X210, managing to get him a race win, as well as Hillian getting driver of the day. Very hard race for him, but let's let's get to this. Let's let's go ahead and, and turn it up a notch and, and get to what we really came to talk about. And that's uh Carlos. What I came to talk about. That's gonna be Carlos. There are gonna be a lot of contracts up in 2024. This season, everything was stagnant, a very, I don't want to say iconic, a very uh notable moment in Formula One where we came back to all of the drivers from the previous season in this season. So that's not going to be the same next season. There are a lot of drivers' contracts up. I think Yuki and Rick's contract is up 2024. Um, Valtteri and Joe. Uh, who else? We know Lewis is leaving. Carlos, Perez, Ocon, Gasly. There are a lot of contracts that are up. There's a lot of movement that could possibly happen. Matter of fact, K-Mag, Nico, Logan, and Albon. I mean... There are a plethora of opportunities. No, let me change that. There are a plethora of drivers that will have contracts that need to be renewed, terminated, your services are no longer needed, or they will move. There are only so many seats in and on the grid where these drivers are going to be able to go. So I don't I know somebody's gonna get left out. And I do know if Logan Sargent does not perform well. It likely will be him. But as in speaking directly about Carlos, I want to talk about what I think his best opportunity is, and let's just kind of go over the landscape. So as it sits right now, Carlos will be leaving Ferrari. Adrian Newey has become a, a new, not a newfound, Adrian Newey has become a recent, no, not even recent, he's been a person of interest. Like, who doesn't want the best engineer actively right now on the grid to design them a rocket ship like Adrian Newey has been part of and has done and is still doing with Red Bull. So when it comes to movement, that is one of the key pieces. If you are a driver and you are able to get on one of the teams where Newey is, right now it's Red Bull. But there have been rumors and talks to about him moving to Ferrari or Ferrari approaching Newey and Aston Martin approaching Newey. So if I was Carlos, you're already leaving one of the teams that are so-called in this circle or this way of rumors, right? The other team that may be in the bidding for that, if it even is true, if it's something that Newey's going to do, is Aston Martin. But before we get there, let's just go ahead and look at the point that Sauber, okay, Sauber is going to become Audi. Sauber's going to become Audi at some point in time. In 2026, this is going to happen. And we already know Carlos has a relationship via his dad as far as his racing career with Audi. Uh, we also know that Audi, to me, is not his best landing destination. I'm not saying that Carlos is in a situation where he's not going to be able to be in this game for some time and contend. But I am, I am asking this. How much of his career is he willing to sacrifice? What's up, Galactus? Happy birthday again to you, brother. How much of his career is he willing to sacrifice for Audi, who is a very robust team financially, a team with resources, but it's a team coming into a new sport, a, for, a sport that's going to be new to them in Formula One, especially to the degree they're coming in. Power unit, uh, chassis, and... And I believe, uh, believe the team, like everything else, it's going to be like a trifecta, a trifecta if they can get the drivers. But everything's them. They're going to be works. 
but still they're going to stumble. So then my question would be, how in the hell much of your career, Carlos, are you willing to risk? Because you're also going to have to sit out. You're going to have to sit out a season. Your contract is up this season. You're going to have to sit out a season if you're waiting for Audi to officially come in. And if you're not waiting for Audi to officially come in, then what you're doing is you're going to sit with Sarberg State Kick F1 an entire new season in 2025, and you're going to go through the growing pains. And I just got to wonder, is that something that you're going to want to do? Is going through those growing pains something you're going to want to go through at this point in time? Because to me, I feel like right now, Carlos is proving to be a very sound and superb driver. That is how I feel. Honestly, I feel like a very sound and superb driver. He, is, he, has, he has done some things for Ferrari that Charles was unable to do. He's shown that he has the ability to um, make the right decisions when they need to be made. And he's shown the ability to be aggressive when he needs to be aggressive. But I just don't think his talents and his time is worth going to Sarber Stake F1, kick all that good shit, and are waiting for them to birth themselves into Audi officially. I don't. And if he does, let's say he wants to go that path, but he doesn't want to sit with Sarber as they are right now, the green killing machine team, then he'll sit out a season or likely you have to go participate in some other racing series to keep your skills from diminishing over that time because a year is a lot of time for an F1 driver not to drive an F1 car or to be closely and remote to being involved in a sim and races. So um, right now, Audi is not at the top of my list. Audi's not at the top of my list. So let's, let's just go past Audi. Uh, it's not at the top of my list. And let's go into Aston Martin. Aston Martin is right now, you know, I've, I've said it several times, Aston Martin with Lawrence Stroll is a very horrible, toxic, nepotism situation, okay? But there are some positives to going into Aston. And if it were possible, I don't know if any of these things are going to be possible. You don't know. Contracts are crazy. They're made out of paper. They're meant to be ripped up, remade, restated, reword, all of that good stuff, redacted, whatever you want to say. But in my opinion, there are some hangups, but there are some major positives to Aston Martin. To me, Aston Martin is a team that I believe is still can be considered on the rise. We know last season they came in very, very well, nice performing. Podiums collected by Alonzo, not by Stroll. And then on the back half of the season, they just became stagnant while other teams progressed. And I think that's the best way I like to put it. I don't want to say they, they went backwards and they just went down. I think they reached a point where they the developments, the updates did not translate into upgrades and their pace soon got swallowed up by other teams that were making progressional pace even on the back half of the season. With that being said, Aston Martin still did build a competitive car enough for a good driver in Alonso to put them on podium several times throughout that season. And like I said, even one of those podiums, his eighth podium was collected on that back half of the season. Coming into this season, yes, we didn't see them start off as strong as maybe we thought they may have or may have been able to kind of recreate. But the point, the truth is, Alonzo has popped up several times at the top of the charts on one lap pace in qualifying. I do believe Aston Martin will get this car together to be just as competitive in its own right this season as it was last season. But some of the other positives that may or may not happen with Aston Martin that Carlos should consider is the point that they are becoming a works team. They are no longer going to rely on Mercedes uh, in the future. They're going to end up having their own chassis, and they've already stricken a deal unless something just blows it up 
with Honda. Honda will be leaving Red Bull and joining Aston Martin. So there is already a superior power unit that is part of the reason why Red Bull was able to grab the championships. Max was able to grab those championships. And now you're talking about a team who may very well be able to forge their way to being a competitive team, if not a championship team by way of driver. I do not think as long as Lawrence Stroll has Lance Stroll in that seat, Aston Martin has the ability to become constructor championships. I do not believe that. I think Lance Stroll is a major bottleneck for them. Uh, his contract is indefinite because of his dad's money and him being involved. And it doesn't seem like Lawrence, even if he is willing or not willing, is able to separate business, the team, and his relationship with his son. We have Felipe Drogovic in a car who has, I think, we don't know what his ceiling is. We got Lance Stroll in a car who we clearly know what his ceiling is. And we clearly saw that he was unable to do what an aged Alonzo was able to do last season. But still, the other positive that very well may be some truth to it, if we'll see where there's smoke, there's fire, is Adrian Newey. Adrian Newey may, may leave Red Bull. And if he does leave Red Bull, I could only see him going to a few teams. And that would be, of course, I'm just talking about competitive teams. Whether the situations are aligned and, and these things can actually happen, not sure. Not even going to fucking look into it until later on today or tomorrow or something. But Aston Martin, clearly in the situation where they're trying to go for, go for it now. They're, they got new facilities. They're becoming a works team. They got the Honda Power Unit. OK, Alonzo's not sure if he's even going to stay there. They'll have another seat for another highly competitive and younger driver. And then on top of that, they already have an established relationship. And we've seen it in several instances with Aston Martin. Aston Martin and Nadrian Nui developed the Valkyrie car together. They've done several projects already together with Adrian Nui. He is not foreign to Aston Martin, nor is Aston Martin foreign to him, nor is Lawrence Stroll absent of being able to write a check to pay for his services. So I think to me, I would prefer, I think Aston Martin is, is a, is a good fitting situation for Carlos. Okay. He's ready to compete now. And he's shown us that. I think if he gets a stable platform, I think if he gets a team who can develop a car, although coming to being on your works team, being your own works team can come with his challenges how impactful those challenges will be to their ability to be competitive right then and there, I don't know. Maybe it's typical and it has a bit, but maybe they can bounce back within a season and next season come back strong as shit. We don't know. But to me, Aston Martin is, is, is a good fit in those, those variables that I look into. That, that's what I think. I think Lance is the hang-up. But if Carlos is just worried about being able to get a driver's championship then shit, I don't see why not. As long as they can put everything together, I don't see why not. All right, let's go to the next team. We already know Red Bull. Everybody's like, Red Bull, if you're a driver and you're available, people are like, yo, Red Bull's your best chance. Now, of course, nobody's saying about, nobody's saying that about right now about Gasly. Gasly's been there, done that, got the t-shirt, didn't do shit with it, left there, still doing nothing with where he's at now, which right now is, is less of an indictment on him than it is on Alpine, because Alpine is right now proving to be such a dysfunctional team. I can't really hold Ocon or Gasly largely accountable for what's transpiring in their performance. Alpine has a lot of shit to get together, okay? Then you got, you have teams that don't even need to be mentioned when it comes to Carlos and where he could be, and that's Williams. Yeah, both drivers 2024, likely they retain Albon if Albon doesn't end up getting a better situation somewhere. Uh, Logan Sargent, either he's going to be there or he's going to be back at home. Then you got, who else? You got Haas. Haas, who gives a shit? Haas is Haas. 
if they don't keep the same two drivers, then likely some noob drivers who have never been in Formula One get a seat there. And I also feel very bad for them because that's going to be a challenging season. And not only that, it's going to smudge your resume. Some teams are going to have to really look through the data, really look through the situations and say, you know what? He's actually a good driver. It's just the team really, really sucks. It just really sucks. That's not a place for Carlos. Carlos is above that, okay? Then you got RB, Visa, Cash App, Red Bull's other team. Definitely Carlos is nobody's junior driver. So you can can that. Then you got Alpine. Shit, I just told you about Gasly and Ocon. Why the hell would he want to go into that unless they were going to give him some major stake in the actual company and the brand of some type of ownership and ambassador situation, which Mercedes wasn't even willing to give to Lewis Hamilton. So there's no way I believe... Carlos gets it, but then again, Alpine's not the team that Mercedes is, so maybe they're willing to give up a lot of shit just to have a driver like Carlos. But Carlos going there, bro, that would be a mistake to me. If you were willing to waste your time at Alpine, you might as well go sit out a season in another racing series and wait for Audi to come officially onto the grid. That's, that's what I'm saying about that. Uh, other than that, you know, Ferrari, he's leaving Ferrari. McLaren, they have two young studs that they have promise in and that have shown some type of ability that if they get things aligned, they believe they can take that team further. So that's a no-go. Uh, and so Red Bull, to me, especially with his him and Max's relationship of the past around 2015, which is also the season Red Bull threatened to leave the sport because they just felt so misused and abused by Mercedes. Now the shoe's on the other foot and they don't understand it. But Carlos, to me, looks like the number one driver at Ferrari. So why go be the number two definite driver at Red Bull? Because that's all you're going to be if Max Verstappen is there. That's all you're going to be. OK, you're only going to be a number two driver. If Max Verstappen is at Red Bull Racing, anybody that comes in, you are pretty much signing a contract that says I want to be a number two and I'm OK with it. This is why I've pretty much come to the conclusion that uh, what's going on, Sylvia Kelly, that I've come pretty much come to the conclusion that Perez is the perfect man for Red Bull. And I know a lot of you are saying, what? Bro does not do what Max doesn't. No, he doesn't do what Max does in RB20. But that's actually perfect for Max because Max has never had a competitive teammate. Max is not built to go through the forge and the fire that Lewis Hamilton has shown he's built for. He's not built like Alonzo. He's not, Alonzo was even shady going when he ran up against Lewis, like, oh shit, this dude's something. Max is not built for that. We already know in 2015, Josh was already crying. You know what I'm saying? Same senior was already letting his ass know. So we already seen that relationship and how that kind of went. And I'm going to tell you this. Perez is perfect, the perfect man for Red Bull as the number two driver because he's a yes man. We've seen Perez get disrespected and turn a cheek and say, oh, our relationship is great. Carlos is not doing that. Carlos Sr. is not doing that. We saw Matt, We saw and heard Max on radio disrespect, disobey team orders for Perez and through a damn tantrum, tantrum, Carlos is not going for that. Carlos Sr. is not going for that. And on top of going to Red Bull, they're going to lose Honda. You may be going into a team's entry into a slump. I told you all several times, Red Bull's first agenda needs to be able to break the plateau of four championships back to back which they haven't done they're likely on the way to do it to meet it they have to break it in order to show me that they've changed as an organization but even right now with all the talks of max moving newy moving the power unit changing new regulations it almost is writing on the wall that four championships for red bull may be it with all of those variables in play, this may be it. So Carlos, likely, with everybody talking about going to Red Bull, the car to car, they may lose Adrian Newey. They're going to lose Honda. Ford's coming in. And I'm telling you this shit in America. There are two things that Ford stands for. Found on road dead or fixed or repaired daily. I don't give a shit. That's what I'm saying. So... Red Bull, to me, isn't even a premier destination when you think about the forecast of everything that's kind of going on.
And even if it was, Carlos is not Perez. Carlos is not going to go for that shit. He's not going to go for it. I don't... I feel confident in saying Carlos is not going to go for the same type of shit that Perez has taken over and over and over and over again. I feel very confident in saying that. So, no, I don't think Red Bull is a good destination for Carlos because I don't think it's a good fit as teammates. I don't think it's a I don't think it's going to be the Red Bull as we know it right now in the next two seasons for various reasons that I just outlined. So with that being said, it brings me to the next team, and that's Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton is leaving, going to the team that is booting Carlos. He will be taking that seat and turning it into a true number one seat. Carlos is out here, and people are thinking that maybe Mercedes is the best place. But I would warn Carlos, there are some things that don't go well in life. You hear me, Carlos? There's some things. Let, let, me, let me get big when I say this. Carlos, there are some things that don't go right in life. When you run across somebody that has just been out of a relationship and is scorned, and then you become the thing that they put energy into to get over that relationship, usually it doesn't turn out so good for you. Right now, Toto Wolf is lusting after Max Verstappen because he missed out on him some time ago. He's losing Lewis Hamilton. He doesn't have what maybe he wanted back then. He's not going to have what he had that was so good in the future. And you coming into all of that threesome of a mix still could be very bad. I don't think Mercedes is even a good destination for Carlos. They're in a slump, and I think they're going to stay in a slump for another two seasons if shit keeps looking like it's looking. Sylvia Wick Kelly says, just want to share some good news. Our videos combined have nearly 3 million view counts. Congratulations, us. Congratulations, us. Thank you, Sylvia Wick Kelly. I didn't even know that shit. Sylvia Wick Kelly always coming with some stats I don't even know. Big shout out for that. That's what I'm saying. Three million views, yo. Y'all remember when I started this shit? They told me I wasn't going to be here past a season, Sylvia. You remember when I started talking about Formula One? They told me to get my black ass out of there and go watch NASCAR. I bet they didn't see that coming. Big shout out, Sylvia with Kelly. Much love and appreciation, queen. So, yeah, Mercedes, come on now. Toto scoring, Toto's lost. They've, they've made three cars back to back to back. They have not delivered. They're losing the GOAT. He's going to leave. You got Russell there till 2025. I don't know if they extend him. I don't even know if Russell, being the type of person he is, will he even stay there? Will Russell be looking for greener pastures after, after Toto's brought him in off of being management, after bringing him up from Williams and the Mercedes? I'm not sure Russell does, but maybe he does. But even if so, is Carlos wanting to deal with Russell? Is Carlos wanting to deal with there being a continuous slump at Mercedes? Lewis Hamilton's leaving. That's an indication of something. Three seasons of a whack-ass car, that's an indication of something. We literally just moved them off from being three up here into the holding pattern. They've, they've gone backwards. They're still going backwards. And I don't think Carlos is a better driver than Lewis Hamilton, for sure. He's not a better driver than Max Verstappen at this point in time. He's equally looking to probably become a better driver than Alonzo. And there's so much young talent up and coming right now. We can look at Piastri, look at Liam, look at Felipe. Where is he going to stack up then? And you want to go into a slump situation? Hell no, bro. Stay clear, Mercedes. Mercedes ain't even in the talk to get Newey. Mercedes is dealing with a lot. I know a lot of people may be thinking, hey, Mercedes, you know, when Lewis leave, they're going to turn it up. Why would they do that? I don't know. And maybe they could because I still ask myself, why did they do some of the shit they done already did? So when it comes to Carlos and me just looking, just, just at glance, not doing any real in-depth research about numbers, contracts, cost cap money, other engineers, other air dynamics is moving. I think Aston Martin might be a more, how can I say it? I think it has a better potential to be morph into something. Okay. Honda power units on the way. If the, 
rumors are true about Adrian Newey. Maybe Adrian Newey joins Aston Martin because they already have done several other projects together. Aston Martin has proven that they can make a competitive car in this era. We saw it. Alonzo was able to take that car there. I think that Carlos can do the same in his own right. There will be no tussle about who's a number one or number two driver there because Lance has to know that even if there's nobody there, he's still a number two driver. Lance is a number two driver to Felipe Drogovic, and Felipe's not even in the car like that. I'm just being real. There's not going to be a driver's quarrel about who's number one. You're obviously number two, and even in your own dad's own team. So those are some positives that I believe are fitting for Carlos to say, yo, Aston Martin might be it. But now the thing is, does Alonzo leave? If Alonzo goes to Mercedes, fine, go there, do your thing. Alonzo's right now about a check, about an opportunity. I think even at this point in time, Alonzo might be saying to himself, I'm probably not going to win a world championship again. Let me go get the bag and just compete in Formula One the best I can and see what the hell happens. Just, just see what the hell's happen. Just see what happens. You know, like fuck it. I'm gonna get the bag and I'll be with somewhat of a competitive, if not a competitive team, and maybe I win something. You know what I'm saying? But that's where Alonzo is, I think, right now. Lewis Hamilton is is somewhere different. Lewis Hamilton is like these motherfuckers robbed me. I want my eighth championship. And I'm about to leave this fuck-ass Mercedes team because they've done shit but screwed me over for three seasons back-to-back. -back. They got what they needed, and I haven't gotten what I wanted, and they haven't built me a car so that I can vindicate my own shit. So he's dipping. Going to Ferrari. Uh, Ferrari's going to at least put him back on the podium. At least, at least at Ferrari, Lewis Hamilton will be able to collect a race win here or there, if not more than that, depending on if Ferrari gets Nui, Ferrari keeps making a step forward, and the cars keep building right, and Fred Verzor keeps making Beef Wellington out of real good whole food ingredients instead of gas station ingredients. Uh, I think it'll be a very good situation for Lewis Hamilton. So, Aston Martin is my choice. That's what I think, all right? I think Aston Martin. So, uh, as it also sits, you know, we had a grudge race this past Sunday. I did absolutely horribly fast. Uh, I, I had the, the fastest lap ever, the fastest start and finish of a lap ever. I'll say that. It was the fastest start and finish of any lap ever in grudge racing history. Okay? The soon as the lights went out, I was out. That's about how fast it was. Uh, but big shout out to my other drivers who did their thing. Uh, we likely will be up on another grudge race very soon here. So uh, Racer X210 hit me up, let me know some things. We got Suzuka coming up soon. That's going to be an interesting race, as, as we already know that. So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. So this weekend, we do have Suzuka. And it looks like we'll be back on regular schedule where pretty much qualifying will be on that Saturday and then the race will be on that Sunday. So we'll be back to regular business and we'll have a Wolves Den on Saturday before race day. And of course, you will have kickback quality or we'll have we'll have Wolves Den somewhere Friday, Saturday, wherever the case it may be. We'll have it. We'll have kickback quality again where you can come and win $25 gift card. Uh, which OJ, OG Zilla donated his gift card, which eventually we'll have a wheel, wheel spin for. Also, don't forget, do not forget, okay? We also have the uh, prize that is going to be raffled off in a couple of races, if, if, if not a few races. So keep that also in mind, okay? Because we will have that. And right now what is up is the Lewis Hamilton 44 flag. That's what's up right now for grabs. So do not forget all Super Chats that people are doing and putting in. Those Super Chats will go. Those names will go into the raffle. And then when I spin the wheel, we'll actually see who is going to get that Lewis Hamilton 44 flag. So keep that in mind as we also are, are doing that. So that is something else that is, that, is, that is happening here. So trying to do a few giveaways throughout the season. So also keep that in mind. Trying to have a good time here at the channel. I was trying to find the picture so I could show you all what that product looked like, but I cannot find it. But either way it goes, it, it will be here, and we will have the wheel spin for it. So every Super Chat gets your name in that wheel spin. OG Zilla, somebody, I think OG Zilla might have won that, the last one too. So 
Dra definitely get in there. You know, we have a good time. We're going to have some more giveaways as well. So be there for that. But other than that, yep, I said what I had to say. Uh, Carlos to Aston Martin, I think. We'll see what happens there. And going forward, we will see you for another race weekend coming up very soon. And then shortly after that, another grudge race for us all. If you want to join in on the grudge races, you need to send me a friend request to Wolfpack F1. Baraka, I just seen you in the chat, bro. What's up? Why are we supreme? What's going on? I see you. What's up, Yuri? Yeah, I see some of the fan. What's up, Mimi? So, yeah, we got all that stuff going on. So, big shout out to you all. Uh, let me know in the comment section where you think Carlos should go. All right. So, we'll pack out. Peace.